So, I got a good deal on uh, Luminar 4 and since I had already tried it, I purchased a license for some of the specific features it had. Let us just run Lightroom. and luminar so although i have seen uh, quite a few articles and videos on the net comparing luminar 4 with lightroom for people who are existing users of lightroom luminar is not even close to being a replacement currently it is good for replacing skies on bifs working with landscapes and portraits but it cannot manage your photo collection. Luminar still does not have any kind of tagging, EXIF, IPTC editor as yet. Location is also absent. This means that you cannot organize your photos as you would with a more full featured application like Lightroom or search across your entire image collection. Besides this, there is no option for selecting a lens profile for correcting the image distortion and no option for correcting fringing manually. Let us take a look at what Luminar has. So, we go into canvas, but you find the lens and geometry here. We click on this, we can enable all of this, but there is no control on what lens to select and it does not even give you a clue as to which lens it is. You can go into this info panel and that is all you have. So, we go back into the edit module and that is about it as far as that part is concerned. By contrast, if we look at Lightroom, we can actually choose the lens profile, you can do a manual correction, you have tags and you can search across, you have geolocation. None of that is currently part of Luminar. The UI itself is not very intuitive. And uh, it follows some shortcuts that are similar to Lightroom, but uh, if we notice even with the thumbnails, you do not have too many options. And then there are nuances like I double clicked on an image and it is gone straight to this edit thing. The first time I did that, it asked what I wanted as a default. After that, I could not find any option to change that. So, these are the nuances that uh, you have in Luminar. And all software generally has bugs. These are complicated large pieces of software. So, nothing will be perfect. Also, it is not like a speed daemon as some might think. For example, if I zoom in here, you can see it took a while to render. If I just move to another image, the image processing thing comes up and uh, it is still rendering and now it happens. This is very similar to what happens in Lightroom as well. For example, if I go to the next image in Lightroom, I zoom into this, you see the delay, there it is. So, we go back to this and we take the same image. The other thing I am not too happy about is the noise correction, the denoise option here. 
The first thing is every time you go into an image, this will keep happening and it is very irritating. It takes a huge amount of time and it's still not active. Maybe someday. There it is. So even if I pull this up to a max and even this to a max, mm, It still does not match the rendering that we have in Lightroom. And it's not all the way up here anyway. And if I go into the white balance, if I set it to, let us say, the same that we have. Let me just see. 44 and 3. 4400. 40, and of course, the tab doesn't work. So you cannot just tab to the next field and the highlights are fully down, the shadows are fully up and you can see the noises increase just uh, on this. So it's not really there as a Lightroom replacement, but it does have its good points. In the earlier video, I had mentioned uh, Biffs being on a plain blue background all the time and it gets boring and how to replace that and deal with it in Photoshop. Now Luminar has a very interesting and fast and efficient way of dealing with that. Let's go into Luminar's grid view. This for example, this is from today and it will take a while to actually come up. There it is. So we go into the creative option, the AI sky replacement, and you have some pre made skies and you can uh, put in your own images. Let's say a blue sky 6. This totally transforms the image. Now, if we go back and uh, let's say AI accent and some more of enhancement for the sky we go back into light increase the exposure the other good thing about the sky replacement a it does a great job you can look at the edges and stuff it's great you can also relight this will be uh, apparent more on uh, landscapes where you're trying to change the mood from a uh, day to night or night to day this is a newer option that's been added more recently. So you can actually select another object to add, for example, BIFs. Of course, you can put in your own photos, but this is really powerful along with sun rays. You have a sun center somewhere around here for this image and this is what you can actually do. How much the rays penetrate through the subject, the length, depending on what you want. It's pretty dramatic. So it's a very simple replacement on the boring blue backgrounds. And yes, we do have structure enhancements. You can boost it up. As you can see, it changes here. And you can even boost up what you've set here. You have all the usual options that you are probably familiar with in Lightroom as well. So overall, for these kind of uh, images, it is absolutely great. The only problem is you cannot use it as a replacement for Lightroom yet. The management features are promised, but not currently available. But it's good for wildlife in general. For example, this image. Instead of presets, Luminar calls these looks. So let's just try this default. And there is a rendering and image display lag. And then, of course, we can go into denoise. To whatever extent 
and that's about it. Then you just need to crop this. It's a fairly fast job. You can also increase the structure. You also have details and answer which you can use on wildlife images. The larger details generally we do not really care about much, but that depends on the subject. Uh, now the issue is if you enhance the small details, the denoise goes for a toss. And there is not much you can do with that. So these are the kind of nuances. But in general, for people who are looking at fast, great results without doing much, for the BIF background of the plain, boring blues replaced in a flash, just like that. Let me see if we can pick up one more example. Let's go into 2000. Okay, this should work. This is just a flyover with a pond under it. We'll do the default enhancement. And then we'll go into these effects. We can do a dramatic look on this. A matte, a mystical just by dragging these sliders, you don't really have to do much. And all of these uh, sliders are actually interrelated. So if you change one, the others will automatically change accordingly. If we go into this, uh, we can do a sky replacement here. Let's say a dramatic sunset here. Now watch how the color across the image changes and that's what is good about it. If we relight the scene, you can see the impact of the overall colors increasing. If you select a different one, it automatically changes that. And that's what makes Luminar great. It's a good tool to add to your arsenal, but it is not a replacement for Lightroom so far.